So, good morning, everybody. We are going to have an introduction to Delphi, or should we say a fast track Delphi course. To begin with, you open Delphi from your start menu. Go to Embarcadero. And I have two installed here. I'm going to open them both. For the Delphi 2010, you go, it's quite simple. Click on Delphi 2010 there. And then you get this coming up. For um, Delphi 10.3, you click on Delphi 10.3, not the RAD Studio, the Delphi 10.3, and then this will be displayed. I'm just going to show you the two different interfaces. This is the Delphi 10.3 um, for start up layout. We use default layout, so you click over there and find default layout. This is just a welcome page. You also see it in the Delphi 2010, but I've actually removed it already. So this is Delphi 2010. This is Delphi 10.3. Now, in order to make 10.3 look like uh, 2010, sorry, default layout, can you see? It's very similar. In fact, it's basically the same. So for the purposes of this um, uh, video, I uh, will use Delphi 2010, but let's just have a look here. We have some extra toolbars over here, an extra toolbar that's not visible on Delphi 2010. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that too much, uh, but we will swap between the two of these um, compilers. So. You can see the difference. But anyway, the one that we use at school is this one, Delphi 2010. And to start a new program, you go File, New, DCL Forms Application, Delphi. Not any of the others, only File, New, DCL Forms Application. And this is what will happen in the 10.3 version File, New, Windows VCL application. Choose that one. And there you have a similar screen. Don't worry about that menu bar. So, in each of both of these screens, we have one, two, three, four different uh, blocks on the left, two on the left, two on the right. Same here, two on the left, two on the right. Um, what they mean is they have a structure, an object inspector, which we'll use all the time, and here we have project manager, which you don't actually need at this point, so I'm going to close it so we can have the expanded tool palette. So we go here to the Delphi 2010, I mean 10.3, same story, everything's the same, and I'm just closing this project manager so I can have my palette available over there. Right, so um, from now on, we don't actually need to use the 10.3. Everything we do in Delphi 2010, you can do in 10.3. So we will do this. When you click on the form, take note how I clicked on that form, then this object inspector comes up. There's a little messages message window over here. I'm going to close it because it just irritates me now and then. It'll come up on its own again, but don't worry about that. So just watch this uh, section here on the left-hand side. We have the structure and we have the object inspector. When I click on the structure there, can you see I've clicked on form one? This is our main window, our parent um, form or object. All of these things that we put on this form, including the form, are actually objects. We call them objects. Um, and when we go and click F12 on the keyboard, just practice this now, F12, and click again, click F12 each time, F12, 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 you'll see you can toggle between the code and the form. Um, and in this form, on this form we can go and put a whole lot of different other objects. 
No, we do not put a form on top of a form. That never happens. Can't do that. The form is the parent on which everything basically gets planted, so to speak. If I click F12, we have structure of the code here as well. And the two main things, it's a lot like a recipe. There's a word interface and there's a word implementation. The interface is like the ingredients of your recipe. And the implementation is like the inside that implement. There aren't any methods now, but that would be the methods, the way that you use all of your ingredients, etc. And what you do. So the implementation is like the methods of your recipe. The interface is like the ingredients. In this, in all units, when you do, when you create a new um, program, file new, um, file new uh, VCL forms application, you will get this with the form. So behind the form, we have the code, the recipe, so to speak. And then the name. This word up here refers to the way that it's saved on the hard drive. Unit 1. Well, we have not saved it yet, have we? But if we did, then it would be that word over there will be replaced with the name that we've saved it as. We're not saving it, but that is another whole big story all on its own. Um, let's just discuss the ingredients and the methods for now quickly. So you can get this into your heads. Um, in the ingredients we have uses. Uses being other programs that are sitting on your computer in libraries everywhere um, that are already written and that this program has to use. Windows is an obvious one. Um, and it goes on. You don't have to know these off by heart. But the, the sysutils and dialogues we sometimes use when we create um, our own unit, but we're not going to go there now, but just know that these are all the other programs sitting on your computer that this program, together with its form, um, are going to use. Then we have type. Type means, um, it's like a class, That's even though the word class is there, but class and type are basically the same thing. They're like data types, or, or what kind of object is it? For instance, form 1 is a form um, object, T form, type T, T for type, and form is the name of the type, and it's an object. So basically, form on its own is an object, and it has a name so far, and that's it. There's the name of it, form, one colon T form. Now this is just the naming convention on how we declare type. Um, or declare an object. Now we are declaring this form 1, there's the name of it there, as a form type of object. And inside there we'll have private and public, we'll come to that later. Uh, basically just means things can go in private that we don't want other programs to see, and public, we can go put things in the public section that we want other programs to see, but we'll go f on that another time. That's another story. But for now, we need to know that we are dealing with, we've got two things, F12, we get the program code, and we get the form in which we put all our other objects. Now, all the objects are going to be different types of objects. For now, we've got this form. Let us save our program first before we go any further. We don't want to lose any changes that we make. Just like when you work in a Word document, you always have to save. And when, you create, when you've got a whole new program that you're creating, you just go to File and Save All. Okay, This Save As and Project As, a little bit too technical there. We're not going to go there. So the only two options that you use normally is File and Save and File and Save All. But if you don't see a Save All ever, then you do File, Save As, and then File, Save, Project As, because there are two things, two things that have to be saved when you save a program. The one thing, you know, like when you save a Word document, you just say file, save as, and then you type a name, and then it's done. Uh, with a program, for a Delphi program, you have to do a file, save as, which is saving the unit section, and then save project as, which is a project section. So we call them unit and project. We don't need to go into any more detail about that. Just remember it for now. A unit and a project, two things have to be saved. But for starters, because I see the file, save all, and I haven't saved yet, 
So I go safely go to file save all. And it will default to save unit as, so unit one as first. Now here you can go and put in your a new name if you want, but you can't do that yet because this is a tricky business. You can't just save anyway. Okay, we know from computer literacy that you do need to navigate to a place where you want to save your uh, Word document or whatever. But in this case, we're not saving a Word document. We're saving a program, which is two things that have to be saved. So in other words, more than one thing has to be saved for every time we save. So therefore, we must create a folder. So I'm going to go and make a folder. And I'll double click and I go into this place where I want to put my folder. Then I click on new folder. And I'm going to call it <clears throat> first program ever. Okay, so double click that folder. Now we can change the name here, but it's a bit tricky. We could just say save and save, you know, and then say the next one will go into the same folder. Or we can change the name. If we're going to change the name, we have to be very careful. Let's say I want to change it first one. Then I must put an underscore U there. Because I want to save the next file as, I mean, the next thing that we have to save. Because remember I said two saves are going to happen. First one is a unit, second one is a project. Uh, I must put an underscore U so that... Um, when the second save comes up, I can do an underscore P, and that will automatically save it as a different name. And once say, oh, but that name exists already, you know what I mean? So use for unit, and then I click save. And you'll see another window comes up, because remember, we did file save all, and this is going to be automatic. And as you can see, the same folders there, first program ever. I'm going to call this also first one. But I've got to give it a different name, underscore P, because it's going to be a project file, not the same kind of file. Right, then I click Save. It's default that you don't change the type there. Just click on Save, and now you have your program saved. As you can see, we have a nice little Run button. When you click the Run button, then you'll see the program will run. There's nothing in the program. It's just a form, you know, move it around or whatever close it. We're going to put things on it. A lot of things, so we must pay careful attention. I'm going to do a lot of programming here in one lesson. In the folder where the programs are, you can go navigate to it and go and check it out. Documents. I'm just going to my... Uh, there it is. Right. First program ever. Can you see all those files that were created just from that one program? And here's a nice little bit of information. You actually don't need these. You just need the ones that I have not highlighted, the DPR, the RES, the DFM, and the PAS. Those are the, mo those are the crucial ones. Those are the ones that you need in order to open the program again. But these others are extra that get created when you write your program, run your program, etc. But the main ones that you need when you have to pass files around, you might have noticed, I've only given you four, DPR, RES, DFM, and PAS. So there it is. Um, program still running yet. And by the way, the same thing happens, the same thing that applies to Delphi 2010, applies to Delphi 10.3, okay? Right, so here's our big, nice big form, and I'm going to, um, first of all, I'm going to name it. Hmm, yeah, because it's form 1, it uh, doesn't mean any sense to me, let's give it uh, a name that I can recognize. So, to change the name of the form... And the caption, that's the caption, that's not the name. There's the name, and there's the caption. Okay, there's the name in the structure, and that is the caption. You'll see that change now. So I click on the form, either I click over here to select it, or I click there to select it, and then I go to the name property. This is what our object inspector is all about. Um, it's all the properties and events. Now, every object... This is a form object, okay? A form type of object. We call them objects. Has every object that we have in, in our program is going to have properties and events. Like properties are the color and the size and the font and everything that describes the way it looks and behaves. And then, the, sorry, it looks. And then the events are going to be all our methods that we can, what we can do to that form. For instance, I can 
on click it I can click on it I can close it on close I can create or you know on create or on activate that means when it's opening um, I can uh, there's a mouse down I can move the mouse down over the form I can have a mouse enter so when my mouse goes onto the form then we have a mouse enter and so on so we're going to see those just now on mouse move if a mouse moves on the form then we can have something happening so these are where you can put your code um, the code that's going to maybe change the form green when the mouse moves over the form we'll see that just now but first go to the properties we want to change the name of the form hey so we click on the form and then we go to not the caption the caption is the way it looks the name is the most important thing that's what we use in code so I'm going to go to the name property I'm going to give it a prefix frm every single object name that we create we must actually uh, give it a prefix so we know that that object is this or that object is that and so on in this case for a form we use frm I'm going to call it first one um, then we're going to can you see what's going to happen now the caption automatically changes to form first one okay to the name property but we don't actually want to see that up there we want to have a nice little caption so we click on the form and we go up to the caption property and we say first program ever exclamation mark so there, the caption has changed, as you can see, and that is the uh, name over there. The name is different to the caption of the form. Always remember that. Right, now to get the fun stuff. Oh, let's change the color of this form when we move our mouse over. Remember we saw a mouse move event here? I thought it was quite interesting. If we want to change the color of this form when the mouse moves over it, that would be fun, wouldn't it? Um, we can go to on mouse move we go to events yes and notice we clicked on the form go to events on mouse move and then you take you see the i beam there you can see an i beam at the bottom uh, when you double click on that i beam then we'll see this come up automatically all by itself now in order to change the color of the form we've got to type the form's name remember we call it form first one did we call it form first one if we don't know click f12 and go click on the form go over there there you see there's form first one so click f12 again you know we still look i'm still in the in the mode form first one dot color dot color equals and by the way the dot color is the color property of the form let's go and have a check if i click on the form can you go to properties over here can you see there's a color look at that at the moment it's button face and there's a whole lot of different colors you can choose from and look there seal lime seal aqua seal green and seal red i think i don't know seal sky blue maybe make it sky blue what color shall we make it i think we'll make it sky blue see how sky blue see where i found my colors that's how you can do it so anyway go to click f12 again and we find this thing look where it's sitting oh my word it's sitting over here underneath implementation remember the method anyway so yeah i'm going to write my very first code ever 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 form first one type a full stop and then type color and then we say equal now we don't just say equal by itself you have to have a colon in front of it that is an assignment statement cl sky blue i just type the color right there now we need to have a semicolon that's normally supposed to be there after every line when you write your very first code and there's an end here you don't need to have a semicolon before the end but normally you do have to have a semicolon I'll just put it there I'm going to make the size of this font a little bit larger because it's really not um, large enough for you. So I'm going to go to Tools, Options. Let's hope I'm going to the right place now. Um, okay. 
edit options, source options, block indent, not that one, display, there we go, I can make my size of my font larger, so that you can see, oh, is that too big, I uh, don't think so, not for the purposes of our program, anyway, so there's the full mouse move event, <coughs> if I run the program, let's see what happens, and I move my oop, I already moved my mouse over it, you see. You have to get your mouse over the out of the way. So see there's my mouse on the left hand side going in, going in, going in. Doop. Can you see? I moved the mouse over and that's what happens. Isn't that super awesome? So we wrote your very first code and let's hope you can pick that up again. Now we're going to do the next thing. We're going to add some components. Now the thing with programming is you have input processing and output. Now the processing happens yeah, with events. All these events are where the processing happens. The properties are just the way this looks and what it changes. I mean if you look at the form properties, yeah we have all different things about the way it looks. Uh, you know, whether it's visible or not even. And um, <coughs> enabled in other words you can see it but you can't use it kind of thing so there we have all the properties here the way it looks where it's situated and so on we only worry about the caption and the name and the color and the um, for the form the size maybe caption name color we don't worry about much else with the form but for other objects that we put on here we're going to worry about a bit few more things here, and there will be different properties and different events for the other objects that we put in. So first of all, let's have a look what we got in our code. Click F12, what do we see? Well, I think I might make this a little bit smaller, hey? Seriously, it's a little bit too big, the size. Right, let's make it 16. Is it manageable? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at what's happening here on the um, the code part in the code of the program. Yeah, we have the unit name. Can you see we saved it as first one? Remember, we saved as first one underscore u. So there's the name sitting up there. Then the interface, and then the implementation. The interface is all the ingredients. What do we got? We got a new ingredient now. Check it out. We've got a procedure, the header for that procedure. It's, we call it the header um, for the procedure that is implemented, implementation or method. There it is. A procedure is a method, by the way. Procedures and functions are the two methods that we use in programming, procedures and functions. And the headers of the methods, or the procedure in this case, for mouse move was automatically put up there, we didn't have to do anything, and there it is there. Now remember, how did we get it again? Clicked on the form, went to events, went to on mouse move, and double clicked in the white area. We can go and double click in another white area, and we'll have another on mouse leave. Oh, why not? Let's do that. Let's go and make an on mouse leave event. We change the color back again, or change it to a different color. So, on mouse, me, uh, mouse leave, <coughs> clicked on the form, go to events, on mouse leave, and hey presto. We have another method. <coughs> so, in this method, what are we going to do? Don't worry about what it looks and everything. I'm going to change the form color and look at what I'm doing. I'm copying and pasting in between begin and end. Remember begin and end? Oh, no, I didn't tell you this yet, did I? There's begin and end, and there's another begin and end. Automatically comes up when we double clicked over here. Remember? Automatically comes up. Sorry. <coughs> so, the form first one dot color. Um, I copied and pasted that code and put it into there. You must remember the copy and paste is going to be your best friend with programming. You're going to use it all the time, it saves lots of time. What are we changing the form first color? When we leave, when the mouse leaves the form, we're going to change it to CL money green, because I saw that one there and I quite liked it. Oops, CL money green. 
you can have CL green or CL red. CL must in come in front of the colors. Okay, so I'm running the program. Oops, make sure my mouse is over there. <coughs> move into the mouse. Move away from the mouse. Move into the mouse. Move away from the mouse. Can you see what's happening here, guys? Super awesome, eh? Sorry. <coughs> Sorry, I just had a coughing fit there. Anyway. <clears throat> no, I don't have the, the dreaded disease. Right. So, here we go. <clears throat> Let's go and put some objects on the form. We're going to put uh, a couple of things. Over here we have categories of objects. And you get to know where they are and so on. But there's a nice little search bar there. In the tool palette, underneath there, there's a little magnifying glass. If you want to look for a label, let's type label. Now, label is the standard label for output. So I'm going to put it in the output section. But let's go and make some sections on our form so we can see which are the outputs and which are the inputs. The sections we use, or the way we use to section our form up nicely is use a panel. <coughs> so I type panel over there, click on the panel, and I draw a section. Um, there's another um, thing we can use would be a labeled um, sort of panel, uh, but I can't find that right now. Anyway, it just calls it panel. So there we go. Let's put two panels up. <coughs> panels are like sort of mini forms on top of the form, but they're not really forms. They're just panels. You know, just another name to section things off nicely. And over here, I'm going to divide my components into output and input. Input being all the stuff that goes into a program. Output is going to be um, display, whatever you see or hear or print out. In this case, all we're doing is displaying. So, panel. <coughs> panel 1. Can you see it's got a name there? <coughs> we actually don't want it there. <coughs> it looks messy. The name and the caption. So we have a name and then we have a caption. And before we go on, I'm going to just have a break and then I'm going to see you just now when we carry on with this program. Okay? See you later.